G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in over on the west side of the map, we've got Vortex. Gonna be playing the Abbasid Dynasty. His opponent who spawns on the opposite side of the map, we have got De Muslim, and he's gonna be playing the Holy Roman Empire. The map, of course, is Nagari. And this is match number seven between these two players. We are in the grand final here of the Steel Series Prime Cup for twenty thousand dollars. Litacore, how you doing? That's good. Uh, Litacore is going to be casting this game with me. Uh, he's gone for a quick break. He's gone for a quick break. I'll be entertaining you guys uh, in in an. Until he comes back. Uh, but uh, Lyticor, great to have you here. Uh, Doc going to be going down in the middle of the map for Vortex. No surprise here. And uh, <laughs> let's talk about something. Okay, I, I want to give you guys just a little bit of uh, of insight as to who's going to be winning this game already. I can... I can oh my. not. I would rather not listen to that. Oh, hey, Welcome Lytico. back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lyticor, how's it going, man? Uh, look, while you were gone, there was lots of things that happened. Oh, no, we got a donation. There could be a potential donation. Oh, the whore, my lord, Vortex. So close to donating over a scout as well as six sheep to the Muslim. Uh, that would have been a disaster. Not only are you losing six sheep at the beginning, which is obviously not necessarily the end of the world because uh, you still have the fishing eco, but you don't want to give six sheep to your opponent, but also losing that scout and losing your information source is massive. Different approaches here. I'm fairly certain that you introduced that from the two players, the Muslim actually goes for the dog on the corner and Vortex is going for the one in the middle. Yeah, this is really curious. So for anybody unfamiliar with the, the way that these sieves match up, at least on the water, um, the Holy Roman Empire destroyed the Abbasid dynasty, at least in my experience. I don't know about you, Lytacor, but it's, uh, it's never a good time to be playing the Abbasid into the Holy Roman Empire on this map. But one of the things to note is look at all the deep sea fish he's got back here for Vortex. He's got four deep sea fish. He's got how much shoreline fish? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six shoreline fish here. He's got a, in a total of 14,000 food in his safe pond. This is ridiculous. Absolutely. And the deep fish helps so much. I actually was thinking about how the Holy Roman Empire should play this one. And I did mention that I think this map is somewhat similar to French Pass in how you want to play it with the Holy Roman Empire. You sort of want to do a lot of rolling, slow-paced game and just focus the combat on one side or so. And because of that, you probably want to focus on your own pond when it comes to fishing. And it helps a lot that you have so much food to work with uh, in those ponds. Yeah, this is absolutely incredible. Um, I, I can't believe that there is that much food back here. So, look, if, if there's one sort of... Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm an Age of Empires fan. I have been for... for I, I've, been, I've been playing since... If I'm honest with you, Lidacore, I got it out of a cereal box, uh, Age of Empires 1 back in the day. Um, but, uh, yeah, about 15 years. But, like, the fact that the Muslim can spawn with four deep water fish back here, and then his opponent only gets one deep water fish, it's kind of wild. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. It is kind of wild. Yes. Um, so, one of the things to note is uh, that the Muslim hasn't gone for the middle here, when he definitely could have. And he's got a great spawn for it as well. So have a look at his opponent's shoreline compared to his. His opponent's shoreline only gives him space for a second dock, potentially. I don't think he's going to be able to get a third dock in there. In fact, I would be surprised if he could actually get a second dock in there. Um, and that's going to be really difficult for him if he was to go up against Holy Roman Empire um, galleys. Because they're obviously going to be incredibly strong. And you need to outnumber them. Second scout came out here for Vortex trying to burn that dog down. Second scout was forced from the Muslim to do the same. But this is where we have to highlight that both players are fishing, but we do have a prelate boosting the economy of the Muslim. So it's much easier for him to afford the fishing ships with that boosted lumberjacking, which by the way looks really good. Look at that. That prelate mm. is boosting both the food villagers and the wood villagers. And soon with that Archon Chapel, it's going to affect the gold as well. So it is a very, very strong land economy over here for the Muslim right now, supported by fish. Whereas on the other side, do have some fish for Vortex, but his land economy isn't spectacular in Dark Age with the Abbasids without berries. Yeah, that's a really good point. Now, uh, one thing I do want to talk about is is often, you know, you, you might see, if you've ever tuned into one of my streams, you would know that I love to get paint out. And I often explain to people how strong Professional Scouts is because you've got seven deer that are in a hunt. And each deer has got 350 resources in it. That's a total of 2,450 food. And when you take 
those two patches of deer for yourself, that's 5,000 food. And when you steal them off your opponent, that gives you a total of 10,000 food. And typically that's what's going to be powering up the Holy Roman Empire in the early game because they love to go for that professional scouts. But in this situation, the Muslim's not even going to need to do that because he has got more food than he knows what to do with. He's got the, the 8,000 from the deep sea fish, the 6,000 from the shoreline fish. So even if he was to go, holy, uh, go for the professional scouts, he's still actually going to have less food from that than he would in his own back pond which is very, very safe for him. So I suspect he's probably only going to be doing this all the way through to Imperial uh, when he finally begins to transition over to farms. But, uh, I mean, this is an incredible start from, for him. Absolutely. And you see, his food bank is already looking spectacular. He is not moving up with a villager to the middle to drop a dock, so he won't contest the fishing eco of Vortex. Whereas on the other side, Vortex is only halfway up to Fuel Age. Somewhat interestingly, going for a culture wing. It's not necessarily a bad decision because the preservation of knowledge technology is uh, something that can help a lot, boosting up your economy in the long run. The economy upgrades being cheaper helps a ton. However, the more conventional way of playing this one is the economy wing and getting that villager discount. Yeah, I think it indicates, you know, exactly what he's going to be looking to do. I would suspect he's probably going to be looking for an H3 timing with this. Uh, probably going to be going culture wing into military wing and then just only going with one town center. Uh, but we'll have to see how he plays it out and then just utilizing the uh, food bonus uh, from the middle uh, to be giving him a, a huge uh, mass of meta arms. At least that, that's what I would suspect. Uh, but we'll have to see exactly how he plays it. He's going up to 740, 750 gold right now. So probably going to be looking to just, uh, I would suspect, research the preservation of knowledge straight away. Uh, and then begin aging up after that. And then during the transition period, probably even drop down double barracks. Uh, sorry, uh, double blacksmith. Look to get those double upgrades in. Uh, but we'll see how he does it. He'll probably be, be getting uh, preservation of knowledge. Is it going to be coming in? Let's have a look. He's actually going for a market. Oh, interesting. I think he wants to buy himself the food. Look at that. He's uh, floating a lot of gold. And if he's going for this fast castle approach, it really doesn't matter that he went up with the culture wing. There is absolutely no difference because he's probably going to use the economy wing now. So at the end of the day, it won't really matter. Also, keep in mind that he's got a ton of food income from the middle. So does he really need that economy wing right at the beginning? Is it actually that impactful for him to have a villager discount when his food income is so spectacular? Yeah. I, I'm really curious why we saw this coming out or how we saw this coming out like this, going for the gold instead of going just like macroing it on food. Like, wh why did he feel the need to throw down a market and, and rebalance his economy like that? Why didn't he just macro for age three uh, the, the normal way? So I'm, I don't know exactly what he's thinking, but uh, going to be going up to the third age now. Uh, we'll take a look over at his opponent. The Muslim also going to be going up to the third age, going to be dropping down that Ragnet's Cathedral and have a look at the macro behind this. This is incredible how many resources he's got in the bank already. Uh, does he have those prelates going out? And he does. First pe prelate going to be heading down towards the south, looking to pick up that first relic. And speaking of relics, let's take a look at the, the way that they've spawned. Would you say that there's uh, a favorable spawn for a specific player here? And if so, which player? I honestly don't think so. If I, when I first looked at it, I said, oh, this is Vortex. But if you yep. think about it, two relics are sort of in between the two players halfway. Yep. One is ra rather close to the Muslim's base. It's like really one screen away. There is one that's uh, quite close to Vortex's base, but it's actually more than a screen away. And then there is one in the north, which is sort of neutral ground. It might be a tiny bit better for Vortex, but I don't think it is as uh, big of a difference. It, yeah. it looks weird because... They are sort of situated towards the left side of the map, but in reality, I don't think there is a massive difference between the two players uh, when it comes to accessing relics. Yep, agreed completely. It, um, yeah, it definitely, I definitely agree with that. Um, we have got, uh, we've got double relics now being picked up. Uh, he's managed to pick up two so far. Uh, he's put that one back. Has he put that one back? You got to put that one back. Come on, get it back in there. But uh, now, probably going to be losing this this relic out here. He does have the option to wallow lol if he wants to, but uh, that's probably not going to buy him too much time. He's probably just going to try he and save the prelate that. here. Yeah, he could pop that because uh, the prelate is getting very low on HP, or he could use the other prelate to Aww. heal, and that's exactly what he's doing. Big brain. <laughs> Big brain moves right there. Nice idea. Vortex now. Right away. Clicking up. Yeah, go on. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, this was before the Ragnarok Cathedral finished, that are we actually seeing a fast Imperial here? Because if you look at those resources, that's actually getting better and better for the Muslim, and he's got an insane resource income from all that fish, the Ragnarok Cathedral. A fast Imperial with the pass of Schwabia could be crazy here, because 
This is basically French pass on steroids with all that fishing eco, so yeah. everything is accelerated. We could see a 12 minutes imp timing, and then your economy is gonna skyrocket. Fishing eco plus Palafabia together, or you need a lot more production building to spam out minute arms because you're floating a lot of resources. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, look, I agree with you 100%. I genuinely think this is going to be a fast Imperial, and I do not know how Vortex is going to hold. Uh, good luck to him. Um, he does look like he is thinking about going for a timing, though. Mangonel going to be coming down. Uh, but, uh, yeah, keep in mind that uh, it, this is going to be so hard. This is going to be really hard for Vortex to hold this. Um, he's going to be trying to put Mangonels down, but you're going to need five Mangonels to actually kill off uh, the Men at Arms, and that's only in age three. Once they get to age four... And you get the elite army tactics. You probably need like eight of them, I guess. And the thing is that the men at arms on men at arms action will be won very easily by those HRE men at arms. Oh, yeah. They do have the maces, they do have the 200 weapons. They are just outclassing those men at arms by a massive margin. And once you get to Imperial Age, if you're afraid of those mangonels, you can just add either spring lords with roller shard triggers or culverins. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the Palace of Swagia. That's gonna be a 12 minutes in timing here. <laughs> Palace of Swagia, indeed. Yes, yeah, I mean, Demuslim getting 10 out of 10 for style points here. 10 out of 10 for strategy as well. Uh, so going to be exceeding notable creators uh, who have got only 10 out of 7, uh, or rather 7 out of 10 strategy timing. But uh, going to be spotting out in the middle of the map the triple Manganel here. Uh, so he knows about this Manganel push that is coming. And uh, Vortex really going to be pushing himself to the limit now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, th th this is just so tough. How, how does he even deal with this? We can see that he's got four barracks out on the front line that he's going to be making men at arms in. The Muslim reaching the next age. Like, I wouldn't be... Oh, my oh my God. Look at the barracks right now coming out for the Muslim. Holy potatoes. And he's got the food eco to work with this. He's adding Lansknecht, though, which is a little risky because the Mangonels, they do a lot of blast damage. And the thing is that Lansknecht are fairly fragile. They only mm. have 80 HP by default. Yep. So... It is very, very easy to just get one or two good hits and just decimate those numbers. I think Men at Arms with the Elite upgrade would actually work better. And now we're seeing Elite coming in. You're probably going to surrender some ground here if you're Vortex. Yep. You might even say, okay, I'm going to give up on the Dragnet's Cathedral for some time and then force one decisive fight. Yep. Yep. I think that might be the, the best choice. Yeah, he might might even lose this Ragnitz Cathedral. Uh, probably want to have um, villagers just healing it up slowly. Just maybe one or two villagers in here. But, uh, yeah, he's going to be under threat here. Five Mangonels going to be coming out. Needs to have that elite upgrade in. We can see that he is uh, It's slowly coming in. Another 12 seconds. He's forcing down a couple of houses on the back line here. Now going to be dropping down that uh, emergency repairs as well. A little bit late on that house. Uh, but now these barracks are going to get focused down. He's going to be careful as well. Up towards the north, those Mangonels do spot out the villagers. They do... Oh, they've... Oh, he's lucky. All right, that... Jeez, uh, I tell you what, the Mangonels have got a lot of siege on them, don't they? Yeah, that's a lot of mangonels out there. I feel like it was actually a waste to use the um, emergency repairs on the house itself. It would have been more useful on the barracks. But once again, this is uh, not something that the monster has to be scared about. It's very similar to the previous game. You gotta play this on patient. You yep. move out right now, you will get your army destroyed. Yep. You wait 20 more seconds and you're fine. And even if you lose 10 villagers, even if you lose some barracks, your economy is very powerful behind this one. You force one decisive fight here and you can win the game with that. Yeah. And now take a look at uh, at exactly what the Muslim is doing. He's got villagers down to the south. He could potentially go for a surround with villagers. He's also got villagers up to the north. Uh, Going to be losing the town center here. He's not too fussed about this. It doesn't mean a lot to him. Um, th this town center uh, is is not even worth you know a a, uh, a third of the palace of Swagia. But uh, yeah, huge mass now coming out for his opponent. Uh, Vortex going to be uh, trying his best to hold on here. And as you said. The villagers could indeed be pulled to just deal with the mangonels. With the Palace of Schwabia that just allows you to spam villagers all day all night super cheap, oh. you can use the villagers as uh, sort of your kamikaze torch units that just dive in and destroy those mangonels. Now, Vortex has spotted that, so those villagers had a very, very rough day. But behind this one, the Muslim is building up a fairly sizable force of elite men at arms. Yeah, this is getting big. Now, do note, he does not have the upgrades yet for the health points. So, I think he will actually still get one shot by the... Uh um, by, by the, the mass of, um, oh, actually, I take it back, I take it back, he does now have elite, um, he does have that upgrade, so 216 health points, I don't, I think it's gonna be, uh, seven mangonel shots that need to kill that, he does actually have the, the seven mangonel shots, uh, in here, so, this could be potentially huge, alright, the surround looks like it's gonna be coming down, up towards the north, villagers gonna be doing their best, 
On the same time, down towards the south, we've got the Lanch Connect beginning to fight in with the Men at Arms. Village is all going to be falling down. He's got more in behind there, getting a great surround, but at the same time, it looks like the Men at Arms are going to be able to defend the the Mangonels off, trying their best to get through, and all of these Mangonels are packed up. It looks like the Muslim is going to be able to clean this up. I think this might be a good game right here, Lidacore. Oh, he's losing a lot, though. A lot of villagers went down over here. I'm really unsure because this wasn't an ideal fight for uh, the Muslim. At the end of the day, Vortex is at 58 villagers and the Muslim is only at 35. Obviously, the Palace of Shrabi allows you to rebuild them really fast. But I'm not sure if this was a good enough fight here for the Muslim. Could have been better, I think. Absolute incredible stuff, though. Managing to hold on. We'll take a look at the village account. 36 villagers at the moment for the Muslim. 59 now for Vortex, but keep in mind, the Palace of Swabia remains standing strong, and so does the Regnitz Cath Cathedral. He could have looked to have taken out that Regnitz Cathedral, but he did not opt towards it. He took out barracks. He took out the town center with 7,000 hit points on it. He took it out, and yet he left the, the, one mo the most important building, the Regnitz Cathedral, standing. Now the Muslim continuing Absolutely. to chase down those men at arms. Look at that, the Lanch Connect in the middle of the map, running as fast as it can. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Quite a lot of fishing eco going for Vortex, um, but the Muslim, as we discussed, he's going to have the villager printer, the Palace of Schwabia, so he can recover those villager losses. He knew that all the way. He knew exactly that he doesn't have the time to mess like 50 men at arms and rush it down. But the villagers are so cheap for him, so expendable, that he can just use them to burn down the mangonels. Yeah. The only reason why Vortex could stabilize over here is because the distance between the two players is rather big. So there's a lot of buffer area here for the Vortex. But keep in mind, he's a Castle Age against an Imperial Age opponent. So we're talking about elite men at arms. And the Muslim's economy with those three Ragnis Cathedral Lakes is actually better than Vortex's eco. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, so it it all really comes down to those uh, those relics. That's really what makes the difference, and it's part of the reason why the Holy Roman Empire is so strong uh, on maps like this, where they've got that ability. But now, going to begin harassing in the villages of his opponent. Look at all those villages just going down, and the men at arms moving in so quickly for the kill. And now towards the middle of the map, mangonels getting spotted out once again. Those five mangonels all get spotted out by the uh, men at arms in the middle. They're going to know exactly what is coming, so the village is probably going to be able to get into position down towards the south of the map, potentially. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I mean, in this position, I feel like the Muslim is just ahead by an absolute country mile. Look at the Lundsnack trade coming in from the mm -hmm. north. That could be game. Yeah, this Those is... Those units do area damage, and that means that 30 villagers over here will be destroyed in 5 seconds. Let's see if the Muslim spots that oh, and he sees the Lumberjacks. Oh no, this is going to be bad. Lanchkinet going to be running in. It's going to be dealing with that wolf very quickly. Unfortunately, the wolf does go down. Not going to be able to get as many kills here as the Lanchkinet and the Men at Arms. And you got to be feeling bad right now for Vortex. He is go going down very quickly. 38 villagers, but it is not too long that he's going to be sitting on probably single digits. Down to 26. At the same time, we've got a push coming in on the Palace of Swagia. Is there any possible way that uh, the Vortex can win this game? I would love to say yes, but I don't think. Because at this point, those are Castle Age Men-at-Arms. And sure enough, at this point, Vortex is pushing the base of the Muslim. But the Muslim can just stall this out for a long time. And he's just absolutely decimated his opponent's economy. And Vortex doesn't have the Villager Printer to compensate. He only has one Town Center. Which, by the way, have 50 food cost on the villagers still, because mm. there is no economy wing. At this point, I feel like with this army still in the battlefield for Vortex, he's got like a 0.1% chance. But if the Muslim just plays it smart and waits, he knows exactly how much behind his opponent is. Villagers moving down towards the Mangonels. They turn around. The Mangonels get a great shot on those villagers, but all of the villagers are still alive with what appears to be about one health and manage to come in. First Mangonel goes down. Second Mangonel going to get lit up there. Third Mangonel going to be going down. Those villagers are the hero villagers. Look at the health. They fall asleep underneath and it looks like good game gets called. Vortex taps out. Our victor tonight is the Muslim. He wins the series 4-3, wins the set and wins the tournament. Good game, well played. The bold man is back. Talk about an unexpected winner. Every single um, set we casted today, it was like, okay, it's a little surprise that Muslim actually got in here. But this one was an absolute spectacular show from him. I've been praising him throughout this uh, entire tournament that every single game that the Muslim played, he has been better and better. And we have seen that improvement over the course of this set as well. Very, very resilient. And when he played his best games, 
he really delivered and just outplayed Vortex out there. Vortex had an excellent show over here, and I think that the two players really show how close they are in skill with a 4 free victory only for uh, the Muslim. But I think the key thing here is that if you have asked me or anyone else in the community before the tournament who I think is going to win this tournament, I wouldn't have said the Muslim. Yeah, yeah. I, I reckon if we did a community poll on, on you know, AoE Zone or something like that or Reddit, you probably would have seen, you know, three, four votes, that sort of thing. Don't get me wrong. The Muslim has got a lot of fans. But at the same time, I think they're, they're realistic about the threat of other players that are out there right now. You got people like Marine Lord who are looking incredible. People like the Viper. Obviously, Vortex as well. Incredibly, uh, incredibly talented. A great run in the tournament he had. And to think that the Muslim was able to overcome the people that he overcame and get through to this game or the, this match and take it 4-3. Just what a That's run so from him. What a freaking run. And oh. we also have to highlight that I think the Muslim actually had the hardest bracket of all players getting into the later stages, especially in the late rounds. Just as a recap, round of 16, up against Recon, a player that was top 8 in AGC Genesis, uh, elite Age of Empires 4 player. Quarterfinals, up against Marine Lord, then comes in uh, against I'm Magic in the semifinals, a player that defeated the Mista and Hera, and then comes in against Vortex. So he had four insanely difficult opponents to fight against in the last four rounds, and he still delivered very, very consistent. He had some down moments, so some games felt like they were a little just weird or underwhelming, but he was able to close out close games, and that's, ma that's something that matters a lot here. Yeah, and that's exactly it. All right, well, if you're watching this one on YouTube, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this series. Make sure you check out Litacore. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Make sure you check out The Muslim. I'll make sure I leave a link in the description. Litacore, do you have any closing thoughts? I don't think that we have to go very, very deep into massive closing thoughts here, but I'm just going to say one thing. The Muslim is on the board, and the next time you're looking at the Major Rage vs. 1v1 tournament, you're going to be looking at this guy like, oh, shoot, I'm getting him as my next opponent. I'm mm -hmm. in trouble because this guy is here to do business. There are a lot of super talented players in Age of Empires 4, and he has just put himself up on that list. So he's got a very, very bright future in Age of Empires 4 because the level of play he's delivering is exceptional. Yeah, yeah, that is a really good point. All right, well, we'll catch you guys in the next one. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for watching.